Winston, Oregon is a long way from Africa, which is where cheetahs live. However, at Winston, Oregon, here at Wildlife Safari, they have the second largest breeding population for cheetahs in the world and the, the largest outside of Africa. Meet two cheetahs who were born here as part of that program, but as we'll learn, their cases are unique. Oh, you might be able to hear her purring. Oh, she's... They're both purring. Yeah, she just loves little people. So, um, this is Kayam, the bigger one, and his sister, Makumba. These guys are four and a half year old adult cheetahs. Kayam's about 100 pounds, and Makumba here is about 80, they which is pretty people. much average for cheetahs. cheetahs love the females people. are in the 60 to 80 pound range, usually where the males get closer to 100. They're built exactly like greyhounds, um, so they always look too skinny, but they're at a really, really healthy body weight for cheetahs. They are built like a running athlete, just for speed, just for running abilities. Everything about them is for running abilities. Their tails are actually really heavy, and they're flat on both sides. They're not round like most tails. And so when they're running at their top speeds, they can whip that tail around to turn really sharply. Um, if their prey decides to turn all of a sudden. That's it, you can't handle it anymore. Um, just like a house cat, they sleep over half their life away, about 15 to 18 hours a day. They have a lot of unique characteristics versus other cats. The purring that I already mentioned, cheetahs are the largest type of cats that can purr, the second being mountain lions. They can't roar like the lions or tigers. A cat can do one or the other, purr or roar. It's a different bone structure in the throat that gives them the purring ability. So, another neat trait of the cheetahs, and if you're ever wondering, am I looking at a leopard or a jaguar or a cheetah? Cheetahs are the only ones with those tear lions going down their face, those black lions. Um, they have adapted to hunting during daylight hours, usually sunset or sunrise when it's uh, cooler out. But that way they avoid the nocturnal nighttime larger predators like lions, hyenas, leopards, wild dogs. Because these guys are built for running, not fighting. They have flight response, where like a lion has fight response. If something upsets it or comes around its territory, a lion's going to fight. A cheetah is going to run away from anything. Uh, they get over half of their prey stolen from them. Even vultures will chase a cheetah off of its prey item. They're just not going to risk getting injured because then they can't take down the smaller, faster prey items that they're built to take down. Um, can you want to guess how many spots Makumba has? Uh, oh, 200, no, 560? Good guess. A little more, about 3,000. We haven't counted Makumba's exact number, but in the two to 4,000 range, every cheetah has a different count and a different spot pattern. The neat thing about cheetahs, though, is they are truly spotted animals. So if you were to shave Makumba's fur off, those spots are on her skin in the exact same pattern. Um, you can kind of see the spot hair sticking up slightly more than the other um, lighter fur. And it's a little thinner, too. That is where they release their body heat. So they don't sweat like we do. They don't pant like a dog does. They release their heat through those spots. Okay. So, not all cheetahs are friendly like Makumba here. Um, most cheetahs, like I said, are flight response, kind of flighty, um, skittish animals. But Kayama and Makumba, we're the largest breeding center, the second largest in the world, um, the largest in the U.S. And we have cameras in the den boxes because cheetahs can be so finicky. Even in the wild, they abandon a lot of litters. And um, Cheetahs will not raise one cub, and sometimes not even two. Cub mortality rate is um, can be up to 90%. So even in the wild, moms will just abandon real small litters. And we figured that was the case when Kayama Makumba was born, because we could see on camera, she wasn't letting them near her stomach. She wasn't nursing them, kind of pushing them to the corner of the hut. So after two days of that, um, we made the call to go in and pull them and start bottle feeding. Both of these? Both of these. Uh -huh. 
Yep, and their mom went on the next year to have a litter of three and was perfect mom. So we're not really sure if it was just because there was two of them or if it was, they were born in February when the weather was still pretty cold and sometimes they've even traced changes in the weather, weather to having a cheetah reject or abandon a litter. Um, so when, at that point, when it was time to hand raise, we decided we wanted to make them ambassadors. So these guys are hand raised, um, leash trained, we take them to schools, we do educational talks and outreaches all over the state. But that took a lot of preparation time. They are still wild animals, so we're constantly always reading their body language when we're with them, but they're very relaxed right now. You can hear them purring earlier. When they're flopped on the side like that, that means they're completely relaxed. The cheetah breeding program has been a huge success so far, with over 100 cheetahs raised right here at Wildlife Safari. They'll still need our help in restoring their native habitat, but at least there will be cheetahs to inhabit those areas if that can be achieved in Africa. Meanwhile, these ambassadors enrich our lives here in Oregon.